top three or so slides. Uh, for the first years, we are newly arrived. Perhaps in the course of our studies, we might realize that we are unable to proceed as we would have wished. So that means you'll be expected to defer your studies. Now, what are some of the reasons that may call for deferment of studies? Number one, we have illness. You could be taken ill and therefore you are unable to proceed. I had an encounter with a student who had an issue. He said any time he sits in class, something just goes wrong, he cannot even see. He can't see the lecturer, he cannot hear the lecturer, and he required time off. Today we all know that uh, cults are real, devil worshiping is real. We've heard such stories. So you have an illness, an ailment that is normal, or one that is abnormal. And as a result of which, you have to be off. Then secondly, lack of fees. You are unable to raise fees in good time. This time we are talking about the fourth week. Again, Prof will talk to you about this. That will call for deferment of your studies. But at this point, I want to pause and ask, you know, why would some of us defer our studies because we do not have fees or we cannot raise fees? But then at the same time, the Higher Education Laws Board is sending some money to the institutional account and sending money to your account more than what you are required to pay which you are using for your own business, but you are not paying fees. Then that will go with having to work to raise fees if you do not have fees. And uh, the final thing here is bereavement. Maybe you lose a parent or you lose somebody who is so close and you are so emotionally affected that you are unable to continue with your studies, you may also depart. Now, when should you defer? We request advice that you define your studies during the first semester. That is only in the academic year. When you defer, like this time at the fourth week, that means when you come back, when you resume, you will start at that point. Then for how long? We recommend you defer for one academic year, not a semester. Now why should you defer? Now after external moderation of results, we receive information on which student qualifies to move forward or to move to the next academic year. So this means if you defer after the first semester, you are away during the second semester, after external moderation, your results will be indicating that you fail 50% of the course and therefore you are expected to repeat that year. So that is why we advise you refer at this appropriate time. Then secondly, when you defer your studies, we safeguard your fees. Because remember, you already reported in the system and you are billed or you are invoiced. So when you defer, we take note of that in the system and indicate that you defer your studies so you come back, if you had paid some amount, you chop up what you had paid. If you fail to do that, then you have to pay afresh when you come back. Then on the number of times, 
three times and this will not be consecutive. So we don't expect you to stay away for three consecutive years. Two weeks ago, I received a call from a student who has been away for three years and he was telling me he's still unable to come back to college because he does not have fees. But you know, I interrogated this student and he actually informs me he has been receiving funding from hell. And then he says he's been using that money to pay fees for his siblings. And he's still unable to resume his studies. The required time, the provided time has already elapsed. I wouldn't know what kind of solution I would give to you if you are this kind of student. Now the process of deferment, we expect that you formally defer your studies by writing to the Office of Registrar Academic Affairs we shall acknowledge receipt of your letter. We shall also issue with the letter that indicates when you are resuming your studies. So one letter will be on your file and we will walk away with another letter. So at the time when you are supposed to resume studies, we expect you to again follow the same process, request for resumption of studies, by writing to our office. We are in the process of developing a form, so once it is out, we will also be notified. So I think that is the information I have for you students on examination, policy, related issues, deferment and resumption of studies. What I've provided is not necessarily exhaustive and that is why again I ask that we look at the policies so that we have the right information, so that we are well informed and we make the right decisions. Thank you. Thank you, Magistra, for the detailed uh, presentation, and we appreciate her once more. You see five factorial. Let's use five factorial. We appreciate her. Let's begin. Thank you. Thank you. She has been very candid on her presentation. Please take things serious. We have been told. Ensuring we will go through the handbook and the exam policy from page one to the end and internalize and put into action what the documents expect you to do. Uh, maybe just to give to three examples. Last semester we came across a student who had scanned an exam card that belongs to another student just to be in the exam in the examination room. Unfortunately, cards that are scanned, you just know in effect. So please ensure that you desist from that because if you are found, that's a discrimination. We also found another student who the lecturer was asking for the exam card and she says in the South Hostel. So the lecture at the end of the day, she failed that to read the exam card. The, 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 the document you want to use the exam card can book. And the exam card is in Kuwama, Kenya. I'm in the front, I'm in the back. That's how she was found. Please let's desist from this. We also have had students who do not write the registration number. Despite the many times the invigilators announce, please don't write anything before you, you write your registration number. 
I don't know this as a student who so we believe they write exams for others. So her Nikki registration number and a key and a sign are the present. So when you, are, you, you want to enter maths, you are unable to enter because you don't have the details of the students. First years, please take that into consideration. The first thing before you start even reading other instructions is ensure you write your registration number. At least on the top cover and the first page of your answer booklet. Because sometimes you write on the top cover and it's not clear. So we keep on struggling. We are not sure whether you are writing 3 or you are writing 8 or whether you are writing 1 or you are writing 7. But if you write it on the first page in the, inside the booklet, we are able to quickly know which whose script is this. There was also another student last semester, but one, uh, who came to, to me and told me my, uh, I want to do a retake because I want to say I'm, 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 I find the first exam, I can look at. So that means so. That is when you do the retake. So I allowed him in the class because in retake you must physically attend the lessons. But again, at the second thought, I said, Can I check in the system? It was PSY 3 level, only to discover he had 33. He got an A. So how do you get confused that you did, you are supposed to do a retake when it is true that you don't have? Uh, the same. Students, let's be serious uh, with the instructions that we are given and we do the right thing, what is expected of us at every stage. So can we appreciate Qatar again because of that session? <laughs> Next on program, we want to invite our DVC Academic and Student Affairs, Professor Julius Kemboe, to take us through fee policy and guidelines. Let's appreciate Prof as he comes. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Tari. And uh, perhaps some of you may be wondering why we are spending so much time of your time to tell you all these things. Some of you know this. But let me tell you one thing. We need good. And one of the things we want is for you to succeed. We don't want you to cause jam because your program is four or five years. We want you to finish in five years. And this is a concern not only of the management, but also of the country, but also globally. I, I have a privilege of sitting in the board of UNESCO and one of the things we come from the UNESCO Institute of Statistics is also the completion rates and progression rates of university students. And sometimes you get disappointed when information is submitted about your country and it's lower compared to other peer countries in the region. So that's why we spent this time to talk to you. And, uh, you know, for those of you who have had privilege of flying severally, you will always see before immediately the flight takes off, the pilot will tell the, all the passengers to pay attention to the cabin crew because they demonstrate safety features every time, even domestic flights. And one thing they say at the end is that even if you are a frequent flyer, pay attention. You may have flown several times, but you have to pay attention. So, we'll keep telling you these stories for as long as you are in this university. Every semester we are committed that we'll have a session to remind you so please take this seriously. Now, um, I'll, I'll quickly go through the fee policy. I won't take a long time, 
um, what I have done, like the registrar has done, is to extract from the fee policy, uh, the fee policy document, and these fee policy documents you can get it in the library. Um, what this document mainly does is to provide some guidelines where we can be able to manage the fee-related issues, including the debt. As I told you, um, to date, I have a debt of 25 million. This is what the auditor has indicated to me, and we are verifying this because we know there are some students who have come here, they have been invoiced, maybe they have gone away, so we are verifying this. And once we know, if you are a continuing student, we will send an invoice to you. And if you are unable to pay, we will consider this as a collection. So we might ask a debt collector to collect fee from you at a cost. Even when you have left this university, we can send your details to CIB. Now, this policy, of course, relates to all the fees which are charged and paid by the university students. It includes tuition, accommodation, and others. So every time we have students enrolling, it doesn't matter whether it's undergraduate, postgraduate, this policy applies. And the reason why we are doing this is that for those of you who are sponsored by the government, you know that the funding from the government is not enough. At the moment, the government pays only 49% of your fee. This is not enough to run various services we need to offer, including external examiners, we have to pay for power, security, and so on. So, we have to raise this, and we declare this to Treasury as A in A. So we tell Treasury, we are going to raise this much, and they factor in in our budget. So every time we don't pay fees, it affects our service provision. So it means that fee is a very important component of running a university. Just like in your home, if there is no money to buy food, it is a problem. Everyone is stressed. So every time we don't pay fees, even us, we get stressed because when the power bill comes, we are unable to honor our commitment and we don't want the university to be declared bankrupt. What the Auditor General does when they come, they check your expenditures. Even the Commission for University Education, when they come, they check our fiscal stability. And before we got a charter, every time they came and she said, if you are unable to collect fees from the students, we might even not charter you. So we had to do a lot of convincing that we are implementing the fee policy to the latter. So, um, so the objectives of this policy is to ensure that uh, we are compliant with government regulations and that uh, the charges which are paid are also compliant with the legal requirements because we also have to pay certain fees to the regulatory agencies. Every time we have to pay fees for accreditation or quality assurance to the Commission for University Education, we pay to coops your placement for the government-sponsored students. We pay fees to other regulatory agencies, including even Clinical Officers Council and Nursing Council, among others. So, um, this policy also provides clarity on the requirements for administration of fees, including invoicing and collection. That's why we are saying, and registrars say, that the timelines for fees are very clear in the policy. Now, there is a link, of course, between fee payment and other issues, like what you have been told about post registration. So, at the end of four weeks, when you formalize your course registration, it will link to your fee payment. So if you have not paid fees, you will not be able to register for course units 
and therefore your data will not be ERP. Even if you do exams and the lecturer tries to upload, it will only process those students whose fees were paid. In any case, it will not allow you to sit for exam. But even if you sneak in, when the lecturer uploads an Excel file and starts to process, the system will just clean it out and you will be left out. That's why we have many students say, missing marks, I did exam. There are reasons for that. So, you are required to pay your fees and other charges. It is not only the tuition fee, because sometimes you also get confused and think by paying the tuition fees, you are completed. Other charges apply, and the policy is also very clear on this. So, no registration will be deemed complete until all fees have been paid, including accommodation, including other charges. And there are categories, I will not go into the details, you've all seen your fee structure, we have a functional fees, which include registration, all the other fees, library charges, technology, ICT, all these are captured, including a research fee for, um, for the postgraduate students. So it's, it's clearly indicated in the fee schedule. Um, there are other charges which you have to pay to the university, including accommodation, activity, medical, field trips, and so on. Even fines. When the library has fined you for perhaps staying or staying with a book, it becomes a fee. And therefore, the time will be going to be clear, the library will not clear you. And if this is, um, this is um, invoiced into your account, the system, at the time the portal closes, may declare you not compliant and therefore you can be knocked out. So every time you have reported and you have, uh, you have reported to the university, the system will automatically invoice you. Now this is where the problem arises because once you have reported, and the system has invoiced you, you can imagine what happens. If you don't honor that commitment, the system will compute this as unpaid fee. And sometimes we advise students. This is the reason why we say we must have a timeline because previously we used to allow students up to a few weeks to exam. And then they end up not paid. Now what's going to happen is that once you have reported, the system will invoice you, you need to pay. If you don't pay, then that, at the end of reconciliation, it becomes a debt. So when you defer and you don't write a letter to register, what happens also is that that remains. Because if you defer at the right time, that invoice will be reversed. But if it's not reversed, it becomes a debt. Because you have been invoiced, it is due. So that's why we are saying that let's follow instructions. I say there are other fees um, which again may come at the right time. For instance, you may have fees for um, graduation, convocation. You may have fees for remarking, like what um, registrars say, thesis examination for postgraduate students and so on. There are a number of other fees which may be approved by the council from time to time. Now, uh, there are some of you whose fees are paid by sponsors. And this include help, CDF, there are companies who may pay, uh, pay fees, maybe your parents are working in international companies which have got provisions. Uh, now, for this, of course, they check must be written in favor of Kaimosi Friends University, not you, not any other individual, and must be deposited at the right time, such that at the time the portal closes, this money has reflected in the account. Because if a check is deposited just before the portal closes, it will not be honored, and therefore it will not have been reflected in the account. So, what I'm trying to say is that there must be a proof. 
by the time the photo closes, even if your money is paid by CDF or World uh, Scholarship Fund, by the time the portal closes, it must have been reflected. I usually get difficulties with students when they come and they say, this check was deposited. If it has not been reflected, and remember, this is a portal. This portal closes on 7, and I think registrar has communicated just before midnight. So 23.59, just shut. And I have nothing to do with that. So even if you come, I have nothing to do with it because it's a system. So make sure that any payment, including those which are deposited, is done at least two days because it takes 24 hours to reflect sometimes. Many a times I have seen students closed out by the system. So please, let's ensure that we comply. So, um, and there is, a, there is a guideline in which you pay these fees uh, per semester, by trimester, and so on. It's very clearly indicated in your fee statement. And I'll say we accept bankers, checks, drafts from recognized corporate institutions and sponsors, but we do not accept cash and personal checks. I think that's very clear. We are going to say this again and again. Fees must be paid in full within four weeks after the start of opening. And this is, the deadline is on 7 of next month at 23.59 hours the system will shut. Remember, I've said it includes all the other applicable fees. Now, at times also students come and ask for a fund. Sometimes if you have a pay or you are leaving the institution, well, this is possible, but remember, this is only done upon a formal request. If it was from the sponsor, the sponsor has to make a formal request. You cannot get money from CDF, and then you come and tell me that you want to get back. That's not possible. You can also not get money which has been paid by your parent and you say that, that you want the money to be paid to you. It is the parent who should write for any of a payment. If you withdraw uh, for any reason and sometimes also programs may not have quorum and we tell you that the program doesn't have quorum, it's not economically feasible, you can request to move to another institution the money will be refunded, but there is also the way the tariff is calculated depending on how much you have stayed. The registrar can provide you this information. But this, again, all refund must be approved by this committee. So I cannot approve it alone. The deal cannot approve, it has to go to the committee, which I chair, and it is stable as a document. So there is a, a request form which you have to fill and then the process will be processed through the normal process. Eventually it goes to Dean's Committee. Sometimes also we get students saying, I have more money, I want to transfer to this student. Or I want to transfer this money to another institution. This must be authorized and we don't allow money to be transferred between students. If your parents are overpaying for this academic year and you want to help your colleague find a different way of doing it because it's not approved in our policy. If you don't pay fees, what happens? Of course, we can buy you from attending classes, we can buy you from sitting examinations, we can stop you from getting other services. If you are a graduating student, we can refuse to issue you other credentials or documents. And even you may not be allowed to graduate. So even the last recommendations before you graduate, you may not get. And remember, the university also has the right to take legal action against students who 
may lead the university without clearing their fees. Either we get a debt collector to follow you at your own cost, and this is what we may do for the 25 million I'm telling you have uh, been told by the auditor that it's unpaid. Now, um, of course, um, if you owe the university, um, you, you can be, there are mechanisms in which you can be suspended even getting the success in the library. And um, like I said, we can, uh, we can commission an agent to collect fee from you at your own cost, depending on the circumstances which perhaps an investigating committee may recommend. So please let's not get into such situations. Now, um, one problem we usually have is the last minute rush. Please avoid this. Tell your parents to pay fees on time so that we don't get into this situation. And I've said clearly the deadline is on 7th of October 2022. And don't pay fees at 3 p.m. on that day because it will not reflect in the system. Okay? So please make sure that you pay fees on time. Um, we want to um, we want to wish that all of you pay their fee on time so that we don't get into a situation where we inconvenience you. Remember, if the longer you stay in this university, the, lo the more you lose opportunities out there, the more you create problems because there are other students who want to come in, we want you to finish at the stipulated time. Registrar said you can defer three times, but let me tell you that if you exceed twice the duration of your program, we can be registered here. You cannot come here for a four-year program, spend more than eight years. Even the curriculum would have changed. So make sure that you progress. Of course, there are certain circumstances which are unforeseen, and registrar gave those options. We accept but let's try to avoid this. There are a number of issues which have been mentioned. I um, which have been mentioned. I don't want to repeat that. But there's something I want to also tell you that soon we are going to enforce identification. So for the new students, make sure that your details were captured by Equity for continuing students. We make arrangements because access to this university will soon be on identification. So if you don't have student ID, we'll ask security to stop you. And this also applies. If you have not paid fees, we will generate a list of defaulters and send it to security so they will be checking. Because we have noticed that there are some students who have not paid fees they are just coming here to harm, disturbing other students. They are notified. The system has closed them out and they are just here, busy bodies, and telling their parents, we need money for academic trips. They send them some money. They do their own business. So we are going to stop this. Remember, we are now a university. Soon, you will be seeing officers from SIPU at the gate. SIPU is Critical Infrastructure Protection Unit. When the regional commissioner came here just before charter, he indicated that this is a public property and it must be protected by Critical Infrastructure Protection Unit from administration police. So soon you will be seeing up policemen. They are not here to scare you, but they are here because it's a requirement. This was actually a circular from CS to Tamatiani that time when there was an issue in Garissa. So we want to ensure that there is protection and therefore we are going to engage the CIPU uh, soon. Okay? 
So that's why I'm emphasizing the issue of identification. Even for staff, we are also making those arrangements. So everyone who comes to this institution must come with identification, and you are not exceptions. That's very important. So with those few remarks, I want to stop there. As I say, all these documents are in the library. The presentations will also be available for you so that you can be able to make reference to this. Lest don't say you didn't know. Thank you very much and God bless. Thank you, Prof. We want to appreciate you in a, a better way. Uh, this time we shall do five. Thank you. We appreciate you, sir. Uh, I think the bottom line is say comply. Comply, comply, comply on the fee policy and guidelines and the information that he has given you. He is our senior in the academic division. He is, we are saying, please support him to ensure that activities in that division are ran without uh, stopping. He has talked about uh, ensuring that you pay your fees within the four weeks. Please remind your guardians, remind your parents. Some of them they don't know. Some of them you are not told them. And that's why we are having this rush at the last minute. Uh, he talked about people who come back because of being in the system for long, you come back, the, the, the curriculum has changed. Like now for first years, in, in our next semester, they are being introduced to course 101, CPC, which you didn't do. So when you come, will you be able to fit? Shall we fit? Hello, students. Even if you are quiet, the ears are open and you are heard. Can you appreciate yourself for hearing? Back up. Thank you. So please comply. We have been told that we have talked to the registrar. She will make available the presentations. Where you didn't get, you will go through the document. And this is key, especially to first years. I'm sure you, are, you have your platforms, WhatsApp so that they can post the information there for your consumption. Otherwise, can we appreciate our senior academic division for the good work they're doing? Thank you. Thank you, Prof. We appreciate that. Our next one program is uh, Dr. Kelvin Omeno, our dean, School of Computing. He wants to give us our closing remarks. Can we welcome him? Thank you very much. Uh, I will be very brief. Very, very, very brief. But you have had a lot of words of wisdom. As a, I remember in 2004, in August, I was privileged to listen to the word of wisdom, like what the professor has said, what other people have said. If you have ears, you will do what? You will? You will hear. Now, fresh us, our first year, you have started an academic journey. You have started writing your own story. In fact, your book is very black, it's free, it's clean. What you need to do is to write good stories. To the continuing students, they are already writing their stories. And do you know what they are writing? Some have written 
pastors. Good pastors. Some are the greatest evangelists in those stories of their life. Their academic life in Kaimose Friends University. You know, some have written, written. Some have written stories of repeating academic year. You first year, you are many here. You will write your own story. I can assure you, not all of you will complete the same time. Because you are using different ink. Some are thinking as they write, others are just joking. But we are not here to waste anybody's time. We are telling you that as you start your life in Kaimosi Friends University, write good stories about yourself. Just write pass, pass, pass. In year one, I'll pass. In year two, I'm proceeding. In year three, I'm proceeding. In year four, I'm finishing and graduating. I can also remind you that the closing remarks are not easy because you have been told so many things. But I want to tell you that in Kenya, we have 77 universities. In fact, more are coming. I can tell you that we have 35 chartered public universities. Initially, we had 31. And now four came on board, and we have that five. I can tell you that we have five constant colleges, where we were initially. I can tell you we have 23 private chartered universities. I can tell you that we have three private constant colleges. I can also tell you that we have 10 or so universities that have interim charter or letters of award. What it means, and one, one university that offers specialist programs, the Defense University. In total, there are 77. You are in Kaimosi Friends University College, a university, sorry. Kaimosi Friends University which is just one out of the 77. If you are admitted in social work, there are students doing the same. In other universities, if you are admitted in IT, there are other students doing the same thing. What am I trying to say? Compete well and purpose. And the last comment I want to say is that just love the program you're doing. Some of you have applied to church, to other programs. You know the journey of our books. Some of you are thinking that they need to do a different program because they have heard of one or two things. Whichever the case, whichever the outcome, the first thing is appreciate the program that you are admitted into. And the program, maybe if you are successful, they are, you are going to be admitted into a different program or you are going to be given new letters to start a new program. I want to advise you, whichever program, just appreciate that program and focus. Plan for it. Learn it. Enjoy it. Think outside the box. Or even now that we say without the box. So that at the end of the four years, when you're doing undergraduate, or two years when you're doing diploma, or one year when you're doing certificate, or even two years doing master's, or three years doing PhD, you come out with good grades. The parting shot is, you hold your own life. Your life is in your own hands. Plan and execute. Plan your time, use your time well. Remember, this is a project for four years. If it's undergraduate, like most of you are undergraduate, it is a project for four years. And that project has time being spent and money being spent. You are spending a lot of money and you are spending a lot of time on a project called 
Bachelor of Education Arts, Bachelor of Education Science, Bachelor of Social Work, Bachelor of Disaster. You're doing Bachelor of Business Administration or Bachelor of Commerce. You are doing Masters in Commerce and so on and in, 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 in business administration and so forth. Those are projects. They will consume money, they will consume time. You don't need to get a bad result. You need good results. And that an undergraduate get first class, as you have been told, by the Dean School of Education or second upper. If things are bad, very bad, then you get second lower. But don't get a pass. Don't get a pass. For diplomas, get distinction. Masters, pass your thesis. And the same for PhD. We value you, we appreciate you as Kaimosi Friends University. Thank you very much. God bless you. Anybody with a query, anybody with a question I've been asked to ask whether anybody in our ladies has a question. You raise it with the, our MC, our moderator. Thank you very much. Let's appreciate our Dean's kids. Uh, using five factory. Let's go. Thank you, Dr. Ali, for the wisdom. We want to use three factory to appreciate yourself for coming and being there and being patiently waiting and listening. Can we appreciate ourselves? Listen to the factory. And all the presenters with one club. Plus, what was music here? To a club. And our photo man here. Thank you, and everybody who has come. Thank you for making the, the session interactive. I've been asked to give ourselves a few minutes for plenary session. If you have questions, maybe directed to the registrar, or our dean is here representing other deans. They can answer. Do I show hands? There is no hand raised. So, having said that, before we have a closing prayer with the Dr. Pesula, uh, we shall leave the lecturers to leave, and then we shall remain behind shortly for one or two minutes so that we can be given an announcement. Then we shall leave Dr. Pesula. Thank you. Uh, I think we can stand up. Let's go about one and three. Okay, let's pray. Father God, thank you for this time. Thank you for the good time we've had here with our students. Lord, I pray that you may give them wisdom, give them understanding, that whatever they do within this university and wherever they stay, that O oh Lord God, it may be a guide for you. May you protect them, O oh Lord God, from every evil. May you grant them good that comes from you. Jehovah my master, I know that you shall make them the head, and not the tail, so Jehovah my master, so that they may come out, O oh Lord God, with success at the end of their four years. I pray for the management, also continue guiding them, giving them wisdom, so that they can run this university according to your will. As we all live, Lord God, be with us, guide us, and in Jesus' name, I pray and believe.